friends, welcome to Pap Studio. This is Bual, and today we're going to talk about how to integrate a network calls or service API operations uh, with the travel insurance application. So, to access the network, uh, Android by default is providing some other APIs like HTTP client, but uh, most of the developer will tends to go for some other libraries like uh, Lutrofact or Wally library. So these two libraries are very famous for Android developers. Today we're going to talk about uh, how to integrate RetroFact into our travel insurance applications. So without wasting much time, let's get into the video now. So before I'm jumping into the uh, implementation, here I will show you what I'm trying to implement here. Okay. So my requirement is uh, when network is available. I like to go ahead and fetch the information from the server and cache it in the local which means uh, once the network call has happened once I receive the response I like to cache those uh, response into my local which may, maybe I'll put it in the cache folder and then the uh, whenever the subsequent calls happen I will check whether the cache has that specific response or not if so I'll be accessing it from the cache and send it back to the caller. Uh, otherwise, I'll go and make a network service calls again. So that is my intentions. To implement this concept, I'll be going for the repository patterns. As part of a repository pattern, I'll be having a only one class that's gonna be source of truth for me from the caller's perspective, which means I'll be always making a call through the uh, Pi data repository. That's the uh, only place I supposed to make a call. I don't have to bother about like uh, where I'm fetching the data because my requirement is clear. My expectation is my network layer will be taking care of all this requirement, whatever I said. So, so let's say I want to fetch uh, insurance information, then I have to make a call for fetch insurance. Uh, if I make a call for fetch insurance in a Pi data repository, then that specific function will internally check whether uh, the availability of network and uh, existence of this file in the cache folder. If network is available and the cache folder doesn't have the response of uh, insurance, then it will go ahead and uh, there is one interface here like a pi data source interface that will uh, have the contract that can be implemented in the both the way one is to make a service call and then one is to make a uh, to fetch that information from the local data which means the cache folders okay so in this case since uh, i don't have any data before this time i'm going to instantiate pi remote data source object and make a call to the remote to download the data once i download the data i'll to cache those information into the cache folder okay so which means i'm downloading the data and cache it into uh, the cache folder for next subsequent call okay now once everything is done then i'll post the data back to the caller so that caller gonna display insurance information over there okay so next time when the users come back and uh, trying to make another call it go and check these two condition with the internet availability if internet is not available then directly it goes into the cache folder and fetch the data and read it read it from there and send it back to the caller if the network is available then it will check the existence of this response in the cache folder if the cache folder has this response of course it will read it from the cache and uh, send it back to the repository so that's that's as simple as that so this will automatically follow the repository pattern which is suggested by google so here you could see this activity uh, interacting with the uh, view model and when view model interacting with the repository then repository will decide where to fetch the data so here we will be having an activity then on top of it we will be having a compose functions and the compose function directly interact with the view model and the view model going to interact with the repository and the repository going to interact with this different data sources so this is the theoretical information let's see how to implement it in the projects please hang up and try again as I don't have any web services that gives me the insurance.json, what I did was I just uploaded the insurance.json file in my uh, GitHub itself. So you can see the new folder called as services, and inside that I could you could see the insurance.json here. If you click at it, you can see that uh, JSON will be available here. You just have to click the raw here so that you you see the few JSON. Okay, this is the JSON I'm trying to consume from travel insurance applications. Okay. To do that, first I have to copy this base URL. I can consider this as a base URL. I'm going into the uh, network model file and then I just place that base URL here. Okay, 
you could see that there's a url i call currently so this url so i'll tell you what are these things are so first of all to integrate the retrofit you just have to go into the build.gradle file and you have to add these three lines the first one is a retrofit uh, 2.6.0 that add the retrofit framework into your application and the next one is a converter that convert your uh, json into respective object and the third one is the interceptor that will be intercept your request and uh, it help you to log those requests in the console okay so you have to add these three uh, dependencies in your build.gradle file and do sync okay now you have to do the uh, api declaration so to do the api declaration you can you can use the annotations called as add get if it's a get method or uh, if it's a post method you just have to specify at post to do the api declaration you just have to create one interface called as ipy retrofact api and then you just have to specify our url so our url is what like uh, uh, this is our rest of the URL, right? Main service and insurance.json. So here I'm specifying it as, as a get method because uh, I don't have any post method so far. So I just specify main slash service slash insurance.json and then I'm just uh, specifying the function called a suspend function and then the fetch insurance. So this specific JSON can be converted into the list of insurance items. So to do this job, I like to use a converter. How this JSON can be converted into a specific uh, list of objects, you don't have to worry about it. For that, we have a converter, that's the JSON converter just read this through this documentation you will understand it better we were added the add converter factory right where we are specifying the json converter factory this will help us to convert the J, uh, json into the respective object we will tell you how to create object of it okay don't worry about it and then i created another function that gonna uh, point to different uh, uh, service endpoint as of now i didn't add this specific uh, json into my repository so so you can ignore it for now so the next thing is we'll have to create the uh, repository fat and to do the repository fat and first of all we'll have to specify one interface called the ipy data source interface this interface will have all possible functions which gives me the data either from local or uh, from the remote you don't have to bother about it where this data comes from you just specify the uh, list of Functions, so that's what I'm doing it here. I'm going here in the IPy data source I'm just specifying all the functions which I require or which I need to get the data from So I'm just specifying it as a fetch insurance and that gives me the list of insurance info items So it don't, doesn't bother about who implementing this one. So as per our architecture, there are two different classes when implementing the same interface. The first one is Py Remote Data Source. Okay, so I'm just creating the Py Remote Data Source class that implements I Py Data Source. Hence, it's supposed to uh, define this function fetch insurance how to fetch the insurance. So here I'm saying that with, with context dispatch IO means I'm invoking this specific uh, operation into the in my IO. If you look at this one, this already taking the uh, interface of this one like I retrofact API interface. So it will use this interface and invoke this specific function. So you could see that this function is automatically calling a function of this one. Okay, which means uh, we'll have this specific. Uh, class will expecting this specific interface okay we have to provide this interface if response is successful then i'm just sending the body back to the caller which is nothing but uh, a list of insurance item otherwise i'm making it as a null okay the next one is local data source so to access the data from the local uh, you just have to provide the context because once I download the data in the remote I'm sending back to the repository then repository will be storing this information into the cache folder okay creating the instance of file local data source and it's it also implements the pi data source uh, interfaces hence it also define how to fetch the data here i'm just fetching the data from the local like uh, read json providing the file path here if you look at it uh, it internally accessing the information from the cache folder read the data and send it back to you so this is a typical same function which we already implemented before yeah i'm just doing some tweak here 
here we define how to fetch the data from the local here we define out the fetch data from the services that's fine now and then we will be having a pi data repository as we said here that will be driving all the full flow okay uh, if you look at it so again the pi data uh, repository will be having another function called the fetch insurance here is a flowable object okay if you look at it, it taking the three parameters uh, one is a context another one is a local refo another one is a network refo so both will be implemented in the same interfaces i didn't specify the class name here instead i'm just specifying the interfaces names here so here it will be having another function called the fetch insurance it's a it returns a flow of uh, resources okay by d by initially it will emit the loading like say emit and resources dot loading and then it's checking the internet availability if internet is available and then uh, this specific uh, file name is not exist in the cache then it will go and fetch the information from the network repository and the response of this information then this this specific response will be saved into the report saved into the cache folder here i said right save file on a cache so if you look at it it internally takes this as entire json and write it into the cache folder you can see that's a cache directory and file name and create the file and then a json response will be written in the file buffer and just close it it will create a file into the specific file name specified here once everything is done i'm just emitting the success with the specific response otherwise i'm emitting with the error if network is not available or the file is already exists in the cache folder then it read the information from the cache folder and then it's emit the success response here okay so this is very much clear right right now at the moment let's see how i create the object for this everything how this annotations what is mean by this annotation does everything we can see it right now to create a retrofect object we need to have two important information one is a http client and another one is a base url and a json okay so this specific functions gives the retrofact if someone has a retrofact instance from the hilt android automatically refer this function and provide the retrofact object of it okay so here i'm what i'm doing is retrofact dot builder and then you yes, say add a convert factory where i'm just specifying the json convert factory dot create as like as this the same code and i'm setting the base url as a base url uh, which is provided here and then i'm just saying clients equal to okhtp which is provided here i'm just built okay that's it i'm created the retrofact builder object so now we need to tell the system how to create the okhtp client so to do that i'm just specifying another provide functions here uh, you can see it here uh, provide functions provide okhtp ok that returns okhtp ok here what i'm specifying is uh, if it's a debug build then i'm creating the http logger interceptor and then i'm just specifying the uh, specifying this level and then i'm creating the okhtp ok client add this interceptor so what this interceptor does is if it's a debug mode then it will print all the response in the console otherwise it won't print anything we don't add any interceptor on it we just creating the okhtp ok object uh, using the builder and build and return the specific okhtp ok object uh, back to the column when we ask for okhtp ok hilt and i will uh, looks for this provides function and provide the okhtp ok client accordingly so next one is a base url base url is a string okay when we ask for a base url it goes here and gives this specific string uh, to the caller whenever we ask for a json hill tender will uh, looks for this specific functions and then provide json object for fit okay so next one is uh, we need to tell to the android how to construct i retrofect api right we already told you like i retrofect will be implemented by the retrofect okay we don't have to bother about it so we'll need to tell to the real android how to create an object for i retrofect api right to do that this specific function will take the retrofect object it will use the dot create and just specify the specific um, i retrofect api dot class dot java so you can see the specific uh, uh, option is created here so 
So next one is annotations. As you know, there are one interface we defined it like IPy uh, data source interfaces. So as we define this interfaces, we are the responsible person to tell to the yield tender how to provide the object for it. As you know, this uh, specific uh, interface has been implemented by two different classes one is a pi remote data source another one is a pi local data source so uh, first we will provide the uh, remote implementations uh, we'll tell to the system if somebody asked for this one you can provide the uh, object of pi remote uh, data source if you look at this we already provide that inject which means I'll automatically create an object for it okay you don't have to specify anything and uh, the same way we creating the another provides function that takes pi local data source and then it returns the same um, interfaces here now the interpreter may get confused right because when we ask for a instance of ipy data source we provided the two different uh, provides methods so uh, doesn't know which one is supposed to pick it up that's where the qualifier will come into the picture so in qualifier we specify two different qualifier one is a remote access another one is a local access this this name can be anything and then this provide method we specify that remote access here i specify it's a local access so whenever you ask for this specific um, interface you just have to specify either remote or local so if you specify the remote object then it will use this function to create object if you provide the local uh, access annotation then it will use this specific function to create an object of it that's what i did here uh, if you look at the pi database repository it takes an object of two here i specify local here i specify uh, remote so it will create the object of uh, local data source here it will create the object of remote data source okay it accordingly do the job for you so finally insurance view model have the reference of five data repository in the init method we were calling the fetch insurance of fire data repository class and then it automatically does the operation like uh, checking the internet availability and fetching the information from local or remote that it will taking care of it so once uh, it's collect the information we are setting the information into the mutable state flow so once you state the information the mutable state flow if you go here into the insurance fragment you could see that the code has changed a bit like uh, we are collecting that state here insurance view model like a list of insurance uh, uh, insurance and collect as a state now we are checking the state if the state is uh, loading then we are showing the loading day loading information here when the state is success then we are just sorting this information based on the final price and then we are just sending it to the render insurance list which we already discussed in the previous video please have a look at it i will provide the link in the descriptions and if something goes wrong if it's a list is empty then we are showing the empty insurance text here if something goes wrong in the error then it will be showing the server error that's it so in such a way that uh, we were exposing that repository through the insurance view model then we are consuming it into the compose functions as a state okay i hope uh, this information will be very useful for you if you guys have any question please feel free to put it in the comment sections otherwise thank you so much for watching the video please do subscribe and share it with your friends thank you so much again bye bye